Okay, welcome to this video. Uh, we're going to be looking at input, output and storage devices. So, this is a computer. I'm sure you know that. Um, now, what does a computer have in common with a laptop, a phone and a tablet? Tick, 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 tick. Well, they all need data and hopefully from previous lessons or lessons coming up, you'll know that data is represented in uh, binary. Um, but that's in, that's in a different video. So what is it about data uh, and computers that's so important? Well, computers need data. Um, if you had no data, the computer wouldn't be able to do anything. It would basically become a brick. It would not be able to actually output anything to you. So if you need data to come out of the computer, really what has to happen is it has to go in first. So let's take a look at how that happens. So here is a mouse. Uh, it's very familiar to many people. Um, it's probably the most common uh, input device along with a, a keyboard. Um, and essentially this mouse allows you to uh, click on icons, select buttons and uh, highlight text and all that sort of thing. So it's actually a really important input device. And there are different kinds. The one on your screen right now is the kind of mouse that you would most commonly find in a house or in a workplace or a school or something like that. Um, there are other types of mice, so let's take a look at one. This is a specialized gaming mouse and as you can see it looks quite different. Um, there are added buttons, uh, there are weights to it, the players can uh, adjust like the, um, the, the, uh, the DPI, so uh, basically how sensitive the mouse is. So like when you're sniping in a game, if you don't want to move too much, you lower the DPI and you can move the mouse a lot, but on the screen it'll only change a little bit. So this mouse is specialized uh, in comparison to the normal mouse that we'd usually use. And of course there are other input devices, so we've got the keyboard, we've got a scanner, and we've got a microphone. Now this uh, headset here um, is kind of like a special thing because it's kind of like a hybrid really. So we've got the microphone, which is the input device, but we also have output devices on here which include the headphone, sometimes it's called the speaker. Okay, um, and I know some headsets you can buy also include some sort of vibration control as well. So if you get if you get shot, the the actual headset vibrates as well, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's that's an input and an output device, and we'll look at another example of one of those in a moment. So getting data out of the computer is also important. Uh, the most common here is the monitor. The monitor allows us to see what the computer is doing. Uh, really important um, output device for us. Uh, without it, without a monitor, it's really hard to use a computer. Another common one is the speaker. The speakers often provide us with either, well, usually it's probably your music coming out of your computer, but there are sometimes little auditory uh, warnings that the computer gives, like a little ding if uh, there's a problem um, or like a, some sort of really harsh noise if there's a massive problem. Um, sometimes it's a happy noise to say, yes, everything's been saved and it's all good. Uh, we've got a projector which works very similarly to the monitor. Uh, another common one is, of course, the printer. Now, in, in tests and exams and things, students often get confused about printers because sometimes they say it's an input device. And the reason for this is because they've got one of these, a uh, scanner printer. Now, the scanner element of your printer is an input device. The printer part of the is actually a printer, it's an output. So we've got the input, the scanner, the output, the printer. Don't get confused between this normal printer and this scanner printer, okay? So we know how data gets into the computer. We know what devices help us get it out of the computer. So what about storing data? Well, there are different types of storage medium. Um, the most common is probably like the USB pen drive. You see those a lot. Um, quite often people lose those. Um, I'm often, I've often got students coming to find me asking me, you know, have you seen my USB pen? And I'm like, no, you should keep it safe. Um, we've got the hard drive, which is found in most computers um, that you come across. Some of them are like the one on the screen. Some of them are solid state, which means they are really fast because they've got no moving bits. Uh, you've got SD cards, which you find in cameras and phones, and you've got like Blu-ray, DVD, and CDs. Those are really common. Now, one thing um, that students get confused with sometimes, and it's important to know, is that a USB pen drive is not an input device. Just because you plug it into a computer doesn't make it an input device. 
it is a storage device. It's where you save your files. And while we're on the topic, can I recommend that you don't use it as a main storage device because they're very easily lost. If you save everything onto that storage device, onto your USB pen drive and you lose it, you lose all your work. Make sure you save your work on a hard drive uh, or in the cloud or something like that and you use the pen drive to transfer data from one place to another or uh, use it as a backup, okay? Right, so we've looked at inputs, outputs and storage. So how does it all fit in? Well, here is a little diagram which you're going to need to learn, okay? Data goes into our input section, okay? And that happens via a mouse or a sensor or any kind of input device. The data is then processed, okay? Um, and from that process, two things can happen. Either the data is stored or it is output, okay? And if it's stored, sometimes it's stored and used as uh, an input later on, but sometimes it's just stored for um, long-term usage. You know, maybe you're just archiving it for later use. Um, the output is sometimes used as an input later on. So if you think of it like a, a central heating system, you input the temperature, you process it, you store the desired temperature, and the output is sometimes the temperature turning on or turning off. The output is also sometimes uh, the current temperature based on a process of the current temperature. Um, so, you know, the, the feedback then goes back as an input, like the temperature is on or the temperature is off and you, you get a feedback loop that way. So those are the two uh, sort of possibilities from the process. And that's it. That's input, process and output and storage. Uh, we'll look at process in another video later on to look at more detail about how processing works when we look at the CPU. All right. Bye.